Hello, friends. This is Pastor David Lankford. I'd like to take the opportunity to come to you today and share with you a vision from a gentleman by the name of Tommy Hicks. This vision was given to him in 1961. This vision is 58 years old at this present time. The reason I'm sharing this vision is because of the conference that's upcoming, April the 5th to the 7th, I had already began a series. We're already into seven parts of this series entitled The Church Versus Denominationalism. Once this series begins, The Church Versus Denominationalism, I know without a doubt I'm going to lose listeners. I'll even lose supporters. And regretfully, I'll lose a handful of friends because they're so enamored, they're so attached, they have such an affinity with their denomination, they're going to be unable to see, to hear, and to recognize the truth of God's Word. False doctrine is exploding exponentially as never before. A dear brother, Brother David, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name lest I butcher it up, but a dear brother sent me this vision about two or three weeks ago while Stephen and I were working on getting ahead of our programming because of the Age of Deception Conference. Uh, the week, the two weeks before the conference have been very laborious, very arduous, very difficult. My mother-in-law is at the point of death. We're asking God to allow her to live at least until we are through with this conference. So I ask you to pray for my wife and her family. But the reason I, I'm doing this video is I don't want anyone to think anyone to perceive that the upcoming series, The Church versus Denominationalism, is based off of this vision that I'm about to share. I had already done six pre-programs, already pre-recorded, already pre-done, to get ahead because of the burden of this conference, knowing all the complexities and the arduous and difficult task of putting this conference together. So I'm not doing this video to defend myself. I'm doing this video to authenticate, to verify the leadership of the Holy Ghost. The brother who sent me this vision, no one has heard. No one has heard these pre-programs we've already recorded. They've never been aired yet. But I've already recorded six of these programs, as I said, to get ahead. After having recorded these six programs, I then get this vision sent to me by this dear brother David about Tommy Hicks, a man in whom I've never heard of. I was only six years old when this vision was given. But I'm going to share his vision, and it's called End Time vision. It was given July the 25th, 1961. And it begins by saying the vision of the body of Christ and the end time ministries. My message, he says, begins July the 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave me came before me. The vision came three times exactly in detail the morning of July the 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the end time ministries. I want to emphasize this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ. Who is the body of Christ? 
the church. That is who the body of Christ is. The greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ has ever been given lies straight ahead of it. It is so hard to help men and women to realize and understand the things that God is trying to give his people in the end times. He says, I received a letter several weeks ago from one of our native evangelists down in Africa, down in Nairobi. This man and his wife were on their way to Tangan, Yakia. They could neither read nor could they write. But we've been, we had been supporting them for over two years. As they entered into the territory of Tangi Kia, they came across a small village. The entire village was evacuating because of a plague that had hit the village. He came across natives that were weeping, and he asked them, What was wrong? They told him of their mother and their father who suddenly died, and they had been dead for three days. They had to leave. They were afraid to go in. They were leaving them in the cottage. He turned and asked them where they were. They pointed to the hut, and he asked them to go with him, but they refused. They were afraid to go in. The native and his wife went to this little cottage and entered in where the man and woman had been dead for three days. He simply stretched forth his hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and spoke the man's name and the woman's name and said, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come back into your bodies. Instantaneously, these two heathen people who had never known Jesus Christ as their Savior set up and immediately began to praise God. The Spirit and the power of God came into the life of those people. To us, that may seem strange and a phenomenon, but that is the beginning of these end-time ministries. God is going to take the do-nothings, the nobodies, the unheard of, the no accounts. He's going to take every man and every woman, and he's going to give them this outpouring of the Spirit of God. In the book of Acts, we read that in the last days, God said in Acts 2, 17, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. In the last year or so, you've heard me mention to you on the radio how that I kept hearing that phrase in my spirit every night I would go to bed for weeks, if not months. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. And I declared that God was going to do something extraordinary through his spirit. John 4, 22, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so here in this vision, God says the same thing to him. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I wondered if we realized what he meant when God said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I personally had the same struggle, the same questions what are you trying to tell me, God? I keep hearing this over and over and over and over. In my spirit, I'm going to pour out of my spirit, saith the Lord. And God showed me this. There was going to be a supernatural outpouring that mankind has never seen. We would call it in the book of Joel, the latter rain, the last outpouring of the spirit of God before the rapture of the church and the wrath of God. As most of you know, I believe the church will go through the great tribulation period. The great tribulation is nothing but the wrath of Satan. The great tribulation has nothing at all to do with the wrath of God. And you will see that in this vision by Tommy Hicks. The great tribulation is not the wrath of God. People have been so misled, people have been destroyed, people have been injured and harmed profusely because they're listening to echoes. People are only echoing what they've been told, and that's the same thing Tommy Hicks says in this vision. 
echoes. And that's what we're hearing. Let me continue on. I wonder if we realize what he meant when God said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I do not think I fully realize, nor could I understand the fullness of it. And then I read from the book of Joel. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. It is not going to be, it is not only going to be the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain, but he is going to give to his people in these last days a double portion of the power of God. As the vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself in a great high distance. Where I was, I do not know. But I was looking down upon the earth. Suddenly, the whole earth came into my view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight from the east and the west, the north and the south. I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the great sight before me. And at that moment, when the world came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward, and I was facing the north. Suddenly, I beheld what looked like a great giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great. His feet seemed to reach the North Pole and his head to the south. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I cannot even begin to understand whether this be a mountain or this be a giant, but as I watched, I suddenly beheld a great giant. I could see his head was struggling for life. He wanted to live but his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And at times this great giant would move his body and act as though it would even race up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous creatures would run away from the giant. And when he would come, and when he would become calm, they would come back. Now this is the church. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand towards heaven, and then it lifted its other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness of the night. This is the rising of the church, the body of Christ, when God begins to pour out of his spirit. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his head and hands went into the clouds. And as he rose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him. He began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord, and as he raised his hands, they went even unto the clouds. Now, you got to remember Ephesians 5 and 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without a blemish. Here, Tommy Hicks sees the debris and the demonic creatures and entities that have tried to take a stronghold on the church, the body of Christ. They fail by the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Suddenly, Every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver I have ever known. As I watched this phenomenon, it was so great, I could not begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, and I cried unto the Lord, and I said, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I felt as if I was actually in the Spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord even as I was asleep. And from those clouds, suddenly there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon this mighty giant. And slowly, slowly, the giant began to melt. 
began to sink itself in the very earth itself. And as he, as he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down. This is the outpouring of God's spirit. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Liquid drops of light began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. At that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes toward the heavens, and suddenly I saw a figure in white, the glistening white, the most glorious thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew it was the Lord Jesus Christ, and he stretched forth his hand, and as he did, he would stretch it forth to one and to another and to another. And as he stretched forth his hand upon the nations and the people of the world, men and women, as he pointed toward them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hands into them, and a mighty anointing of God came upon them, and those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched it. It seemed it went into days and weeks and months. And I beheld this Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand, but there was a tragedy. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt would certainly receive the call of God. But as he stretched forth his hand toward this one and toward that one, they simply bowed their head and began to back away. And each of those that seemed to bow down and back away seemed to go into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it. But these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over this world, in Africa, England, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forward in the name of the Lord. I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers. They were washer women. They were rich men. They were poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness and blindness and deafness. As the Lord stretched forth to give them this anointing, they became well, they became healed, and they went forth. And this is the miracle of it all. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hands exactly as the Lord did, and it seemed as if there was this same liquid fire in their hands. As they stretched forth their hands, they said, according to my word, be thou made whole. As these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I, was not, I did not fully realize what it was. I looked to the Lord and said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that which I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar will restore all that they have destroyed. This, my people, is the end times, and they will go forth. As a mighty army shall they sweep over the face of the earth. As I was at this great height, I behold the whole I could behold the whole world. I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. Suddenly there was a man in Africa, and in a moment he was transported by the Spirit of God, and perhaps he was in Russia or China or America or some other place, and vice versa. All over the world, these people went, and they came through fire and through pestilence and through famine. Neither fire nor persecution, nothing seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns, and like Jesus, they passed through the multitudes, and they could not find them 
But they went forth in the name of the Lord. And everywhere they stretched forth their hands, the sick were healed. The blind eyes were opened. There was not a long prayer. And after I had reviewed the vision many times in my mind, and I thought about it many times, now listen to this, I realized that I never saw a church and I never saw or heard a denomination. But these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. I want to pause there for just a moment. The very reason I'm sharing this vision from Tommy Hicks, July the 25th, 1961, is because in the last several months, as I have prayed and sought the face of God, God put it in my spirit, God put it in my heart to begin to do a teaching series entitled The Church Versus Denominationalism. I have a three-hour DVD series entitled Denominational Chaos, The Storm, Eurocladon. When God began to put this in my spirit several months ago, he said, I want you to do a teaching on the church versus denominationalism. If you or I, either one, were to die today and go to heaven, you would not walk down the streets of gold and see a plaque or a sign, Church of God, here, Methodist, here, Baptist, here, Lutheran, here, Pentecostal holiness, here, Episcopalian, here, Presbyterian, here, Methodist here, you would never see that. You know why? There's only one church. There's only one body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I had this vision sent to me and I read this phrase, Tommy Hicks said, I realized that I never saw a church and I never saw or heard a denomination. Denominations are destructive and devices. They're like the Pharisees and they're like the Sadducees. If you don't do it our way, you're not saved. If you don't go our way, you're not saved. If you go their way, you're going to hell. This is what denominationalism has done. Read your Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Man will never build the church of God. Jesus Christ will build his church. Look through every Pauline epistle and you never see one denomination. It's always one church, and that church is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm not sharing this to defend myself, for I have nothing to defend other than the gospel of Christ. I'm sharing this vision because I've already pre-recorded six programs to be ahead after the Age of Deception Conference, because we know we're going to be overwhelmed and deluged with a, a load of work that will get us behind the eight ball, but I'm trying to stay ahead. So God has already put it in my spirit to teach that denominationalism is not of God. God did not create it. God did not ordain it, but men have created it. Every time somebody receives a purported revelation, they break off and they start another denomination and they say, now we're the ones that have the truth. And then somebody in that circle says, oh, I've got a revelation and they break off. And if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul said, is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? One says I'm of Paul. One says I am of Apollos. One says I'm of Cephas or of Peter. He said, was Paul crucified for you? No, Jesus was crucified for all mankind. Let me finish the vision. I never saw or heard a denomination, but these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forth in everything they did as the ministry of Christ in the end times, 
These people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of the coming kingdom. And this last hour, it was so glorious, but it seemed as though there were those that rebelled and they would become angry. And they tried to attack the, those workers that were giving the message. God is going to give the world a demonstration in this last hour as the world has never known. These men and women are of all walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. Degrees, doctorate degrees, PhDs, masters, doctor of divinity. He said the degrees that men possess will mean nothing. I saw these workers as they were going over the face of the earth. When one would stumble and fall, another would come and pick him up. There were no big eyes and little U's, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted. And they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love, a divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they worked together and as they lived together. It was the most glorious sight that I have ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of their life. They continued, and it seemed the days went by as I stood and beheld this sight. I could only cry, and sometimes I laughed. It was so wonderful as these people went throughout the face of the whole earth, bringing forth in the last end time. As I watched from the very heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations, and that congregation would lift up their hands and seemingly praise God for hours, even days, as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour my Spirit upon all flesh, and that, and that is exactly this thing. And to every man and to every woman that received this power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. We, we have talked about miracles. We've talked about signs and wonders. But I could not help but weep as I read again this morning at 4 o'clock this morning the letter from our native workers. This is only the evidence of the beginning for one man, a do-nothing and unheard of. Who would go and stretch forth his hand and say, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to flow into your body. I dropped to my knees and began to pray again. And I said, Lord, I know that this time is coming soon. And then again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every angle. Suddenly there was another great clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. And I heard again the voice, the voice that seemed to speak. Now, this is my people. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth, and I could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were opened, and people from all over the world, the saints of all ages, seemed to be rising. And, and as they rose from the grave, suddenly all these people came from every direction, from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body as the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first. I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was so far beyond anything I had ever dreamed or think of. But as this body suddenly began to form and take shape, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle as its body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathered into this body. And slowly, slowly, as it began to form up into the very heavens, Suddenly, the heavens above, the Lord came and became the head. Who's the head of the church? Who's the head of the body? Jesus, the Lord's Christ. Again, this is the church. This is the body of Christ. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north, and I saw seemingly destruction, men and women in anguish and crying out, and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, Now is my wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole world, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out, and it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. 
It was after the rapture, the wrath of God. But it says the church went through great persecution. Why? Because the great tribulation is the persecution of Satan. The great tribulation has nothing to do with the wrath of God. In this vision, after the church is removed, then the wrath of God, but not until. So the church goes through the great tribulation. Why? It perfects it. Pain, suffering, toil, bearing your cross, matures the body. Then once the body is mature, God will take the church out. Let me read again. As I watched my eyes suddenly turn to the far north, I saw seemingly destruction, men and women in anguish and crying out and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, now is my wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole earth, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out, and it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. I can remember it as though it were happening a moment ago. I shook and I trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing the cities and the whole nations going down in destruction. I could hear the weeping and wailing. I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves, but the caves and the mountains opened up. They leaped into water, but the water could not drown them. There was nothing that could destroy them. They were wanting to take their lives, but they could not. That's Revelation chapter 9, verse 6. They would seek death, and death would flee from them. This prophecy is absolutely so pointed and so accurate, it begs description. Then again, I turned my eyes to this glorious sight, the body arrayed in beautiful white shining garments, Slowly, slowly, it began to lift from the earth, and as it did, I awoke. What a sight I had beheld. I had seen the end-time ministries, the last hour. Again, on July the 27th at 2.30 in the morning, the same revelation, the same visions came again exactly as it did before. My life has been changed as I realized that we are living in that end time. For all over the world, God is anointing men. With this ministry, it will not be doctrine. It will not be churchianity. It is going to be Jesus Christ. They will give forth the word of the Lord. There will not be any denominational echoes. Now, I want to say this before I stop. It will not be doctrine. What he means by that, false doctrine, false teachings, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect, fully furnished unto all good works. I want to reread this statement again. I realized that I never saw a church, I never saw or heard a denomination. Again, I read this vision because I've already produced six radio programs entitled The Church Versus Denominationalism. I didn't read this. I didn't share this to defend myself. I shared this to authenticate the validity and the veracity and the tenacity of the witness of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Denominations are not what God is going to use. He said ditch diggers, wash women, common people. God is going to use people who the world says that's impossible. Remember, God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise that no flesh should glory in his presence. So when he says it will not be about doctrine, He's talking about false doctrine because there is so much false doctrine in the church today, it begs description. Men have done more harm, more harm and more damage to the church than anything else in the world. Men have brought in their own deceived perceptions and said, this is doctrine, this is doctrine, that is doctrine. But if it doesn't bear witness with God's word, it is false doctrine. That's why personally, 
I no longer belong to a denomination. I will never be a part of another denomination because I cannot find the word denomination in the word of God nowhere in the scriptures because it is divisive. It is divisive. There will be Lutherans. There will be Episcopals. There will be Presbyterians. There will be Methodists. There will be Church of God, Assemblies of God, Pentecostal Holiness, Four Square. There will be all sorts of people, Baptists, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ that will be a part of the body of Christ. Do not become affixed and be possessed and controlled by an organization, by a denomination. Be led by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God demands, God commands us to be led by the Holy Ghost. God bless you. We cover your prayers. This is Monday, April the 1st. Pray for us. Pray for our conference. We're looking for a deluge, a fresh and a flood of the Holy Ghost. I look to see you there. I'm anticipating one of the greatest moves of God that I've ever seen in my life personally. You've been fasting. We've been fasting. We've been praying. You've been praying. Our work and labor of love is not going to be in vain. Again, this vision was given July the 25th, 1961, 58 years ago. But I'm so impressed with what God has put in my spirit about the church versus denominationalism. And when Tommy Hicks had this vision, he saw no denomination. Why? It's not about denominations. It's about one person. And that person is Jesus, the Lord's Christ. God bless you. May God keep you. And may the Holy Ghost of God forever order your steps in his most holy and precious word. Until next time, be faithful, endure all things, for he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Everywhere we turn, there's deception. And to help you better identify this deception, David Langford and the Voice of Evangelism has assembled a stellar lineup of speakers for their Age of Deception conference coming to the Hickory Metro Convention Center April 4th through 7th. Join David Langford along with world-renowned researcher and author Steve Quayle, Douglas and Joe Hagman of the Hagman and Hagman Report, artificial intelligence expert Hugo DeGaris, Irving Baxter, host of the internationally syndicated biblical prophecy television program, End of the Age. Age, along with Jimmy D. Smith and Russ Dizdar for the Age of Deception Conference, April 4th through 7th at the Hickory Metro Convention Center. You can make your reservations now online at thevoiceofevangelism.com. Registration fee is $100 per person. Find out more about the speakers and their speaking schedules at thevoiceofevangelism.com. And make your reservation now to attend the Age of Deception Conference coming to Hickory, North Carolina at the Hickory Metro Convention Center, April 4th through 7th. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. That's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020.